Yes. Cold. Holy smoke. Oh, shit. How many seconds was that? Fourth consecutive vicious first Holy round knockout. Cow. See, that's what we're talking about. You can't make any mistakes. You can't be there when the punches land. I wasn't ready, guys. I wasn't ready. It doesn't matter how, what kind of a technical striker you are. It doesn't matter how much experience you are. Francis Ngannou has freak power. Like no one in the division. I used to say Bro, that Rebel was like Johnson 10 seconds? was the biggest power threat in UFC history. Daniel, the guy you have two wins over. Francis Ngannou's next level, man. Oh, it's unbelievable. He blitzes you. And once he gets his hands on these guys, they just go Rosen up. Strike was so undefeated. Big, he's so powerful. He's so explosive that you cannot withstand the, the, the rush. And, and, I mean, he put Biggie Boy out bad. That was the fight. Bad this and quick. Fight replay is brought to you by Nemiroff. Bold character since 1872. Wow. And here's the full fight. I mean, Rosa Strike here, it looks like he's going to be a, a, a kickboxing match, you know? This doesn't benefit Francis. Francis decides, okay, well, I'm, I'm trying to count the seconds. And Rosa Strike does It was more than 10 seconds, to obviously. Take him down. So this just starts happening. I mean, it was a left hook that, like, kind of snuck in. As soon as one lands, yeah. it's over. Look at Francis' just, chin. Just Look at his chin. Look at Francis' yeah. chin, though. I mean, his chin's way up in the air. He's just throwing. He's Boom. just it's trying over. to connect. He's just, he just trying to connect because he understands. He understands that if he hits you, you're done. See, I'm trying not to get copyrighted. It, it's going to be the second left hook. This one. Boom. Oh, and that one going down put him to sleep. My. Wow. And y'all know it's a problem. He's a problem. He is a problem. We're going to listen to the post-fight interview, and honestly, you know, the the I was going to say one hundred. The heavyweight division is a little bit top-heavy. They're waiting on what Stipe is going to do. Stipe doesn't want to fight uh, Cormier this summer until basically he wants like a proper camp. He it looks like to me from what I'm gathering from it that he don't want to fight. Hold on, let's listen in. It mattered. No. You don't want to fight. No, they, need to let, they need to let Jorginho sit down. He shouldn't be walking right now. He's still not back. For historically low rates, refinance your mortgage at rate.com with guaranteed rate safe he and was simple asleep. all digital mortgage. Visit rate.com now to make it official. Here's the box. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Murliata has called a stop to this contest at 20 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Francis the Predator and Gano. How are you, sir? Congratulations. Thank you, sir. This was a fight that Rosenstrike called for. He, be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, when I saw, when I heard he called me out, I knew that he didn't know what he's doing. You know, he's not ready for. I mean, he has a lot of potential, obviously, and but I think he has to. To take uh, a step back and then get ready before uh, fight against someone like me. Well, the power that you d display, my friend, let's take a look at it real quick. You blitzed him. You just came forward and threw these full power bombs. You got him backing up against the cage and boom, this is the one that got him. You clipped him with that left hook. Everything after that is just academic. Yeah, you know, uh, me and my body, my coach Raya, Every next week, we've been working for 15, 15 weeks, uh, and uh, Dewey Cooper and Michael. So we've been working hard on uh, uh, striking combo, how to dodge everything, you know, how to set up, and then uh, I, that's what I worked in here with it. Like I had exactly the setup, and obviously he didn't get caught on that setup, but I follow up. So he was a great, a great teamwork. Now, Francis, I follow you on social media, and you put all these hashtags, uncrowned champ. You're in this position where the UFC's heavyweight division is on hold. How frustrating is that for you, and where do you feel you fit in the division? You know, that's very frustrating. Where, where I feel like I fit, I don't know. Uh, I was expecting this fight to be my uh, for the title. I mean, after DGS, I expect to fight for the title, but uh, it didn't happen. Then we asked the UFC for the um, interim title fight on this fight, and they didn't make it. And uh, to be honest, I don't know exactly where, the, exactly where the division is at right now. 
So I'm just here, you know, let's see, fight some fight out of my contract and see how it goes. Well, with a performance like that, it's hard to deny you any longer. I'm sure everyone's going to want to see you fight for the title next. Spectacular performance. Thank you very much, sir, and congratulations. Thank you very much, Joe. And uh, thank you for all my friends around the world. Thank you for all the support. I received your message, guy. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Gentlemen, well, you get the sense that fan base might swell a little bit tonight, Daniel Cormier, yeah. but it's been an incredible 2020 for him. Yeah, so how, you know, how does that work? You know, because obviously Dana White and UFC, they're not going to do Ngannou versus Blades again, right? They're not going to do that shit again. Here's one more. He just went out there and just got rid of him. Boom. Ooh, and the, oh, man. So, they really, UFC is really doing their best, and they're going to make sure this fight between Cormier and uh, Milchik happens. You know, you know, Daniel White loves him some, um, some DC. But in the meantime, what does Ngano do? Rematch against uh, um, Derek Lewis? I mean, you want to see him knock out Blades again? You know? Overeem? I mean, I don't know, but it, if whatever fight it's got, it, it is, it's got to be for the interim, right? It's got to be. So it's got to be either Blades or, or, or Derek Lewis. But then where does uh, Dos Santos sit with that? I don't know. You know, it's crazy. You know, in... in, in it, it's politics in the UFC too, like boxing. It's politics. You know, there's no reason why they should have to wait. Like he should have to wait. And and I get. See, here's the thing: is I get where Stipe is coming from. You know, and he has every right to not want to go into the biggest fight of his career of his life when there's a when there's a lockdown and you know he can't really train like he really really want to. You know. But it is what it is. You know, do we have the official numbers on how many seconds that was? Also, did you notice the UFC strike counter is missing tonight? Like you when they showed a little, you know, this many strikes versus this many strikes, that shit is missing. But overall, I'm at least glad they're doing the post fight interviews. I was a little I was a little disappointed they didn't do a post fight interview for um um uh as far as uh, uh Waterson. But that fight wasn't really, you know, it kind of took the air out of the night. You know, a little bit. Anyway, I'm T3 Controversy with FightView360.com. We cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe. I'm looking forward, you know, um, to the next UFC events and also the fact that it's the only sports on in town. Can you imagine the push this is getting on on on? On going to be getting on Sports Center and next week, and also seems as though pay per view buys may be doing really, really well because you have a lot of people on Twitter, from what I've been seeing, been have, having issues ordering the fight. So they've been actually having to call in, you know, the old school way, manually order the fight, have them fucking send the feed to you and shit after you pay for it. But nonetheless, you know, shout out to Dana White, he did it. First sport back in the United States, he did it. They even had Donald Trump. Um, um, at the very beginning, go check my Twitter, uh, T Street for Life. It's been popping up on the screen, is also down below in the description box. They've been having Donald Trump, you know, they had Donald Donald Trump do a special opening message at the beginning. Was it the prelims or was it the uh, the actual pay per view broadcast? I think it was the prelims. Nonetheless, this shit got a nice amount of clout behind it, but anyway. This has already lasted longer than the motherfucking fight, so I don't want to sit here and bore you guys too much longer. But if there is a fight, you know, bring on Ngannou versus uh, Derek Lewis too. Even though the first one was ill, and I understand, I remember, wasn't the commentary even getting close to shitting on the fight? It was that bad. But, you know... I don't know. I mean, at this point in time with a lockdown, shit, you know? But that was a fight where people were expecting, like, yeah, somebody's getting knocked the fuck out. And that shit went the motherfucking distance. Ew. 
you know. Anyway, please subscribe and history controversy with fightview360.com. Who's been doing it all for a long time, but I think this